So, we will start our gathering with the recitation of Surah Fatiha by one of our students. His name is Anas. I hope he's in the hall somewhere. So, Anas, if you can start making your way to the hall. Oh, there he is. Okay. Um, Anas. Okay. And um, as we all know and believe that whilst the Quran is being recited, the Quran directly instruct us, instructs us to remain silent and to listen attentively. So that is the Quranic principle for us. So your mouth very close, not to worry. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الله الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين ما شاء الله Someone was about to clap, that's fine. Um, that was, that was, uh, you were about to clap, that's absolutely fine. But uh, can we have a round of a mashallah? Okay. Okay. Jazakallah Anas. Uh, Jazakallah Anas for that. Um, I just told Anas about, I think about eight minutes ago, if he could do this for us. And he did, so Jazakallah for that. Uh, so that wasn't really pre planned. So we've started with um, the recitation of the Quran, the words of Allah. Um, I'm not going to be talking much today because it's going to be our presentations that we will uh, show you and illustrate what our madrasa has been doing for the past five years. I just want to start with the words of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then our philosophy in short, followed by uh, the promise of our madrasa, which was inspired by Sheikh Al Islam um, uh, Abdullah Quilliam. Okay, do not to mistake his name for a um, organization that we are very well aware with. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he once said, Ad-dunya mal'oona wa mal'oonun ma fiha illa dhikrullahi ta'ala wa ma wala wa aliman aw muta'allima. So our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the world with all that it contains is accursed except for the remembrance of Allah, that which pleases Allah, and the religious scholars and seekers of knowledge. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, now the hadith that I'm going to mention, many of our students have mentioned it, and even Anas complained that I say it too much. But the reason why I want to mention it is to give you um, the, the understanding that our curriculum and our madrasa want a holistic approach to Islam for our children. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once said, that teach or learn archery and the Quran. So for us, that focuses on the physical and also uh, the metaphysical, as in the text through which we gain in the hereafter. And this fits in with our principle and also our philosophy of looking at the child as a whole and focusing on, on our children as holistic individuals as opposed to uh, them having this world view that if you come to madrasa, it's only about reading from a text or it's only about reading from the Quran and not understanding much. But it's very important that in our world view, it needs to be encompassing to ensure that it encompasses the physical, metaphysical, the spiritual, and intellectual. 
So at our madrasa, okay, we specialize or try our utmost to facilitate the cultural, the experiential, the conscientious, the critical, creative growth of children through to their later teens by means of a holistic pedagogy infused with the synthesizing of traditional and contemporary ideas in order for them to have a well-rounded Islamic world view. And this, we believe, you know, we are inspired by the life of our Prophet Wasallam in all its holistic form. I would like to start our presentation with a promise which Sheikh Abdullah Quilliam used to mention. And the reason why I'm bringing him into, the, in, into our presentation is because it was at his hands that Fatima Elizabeth uh, Cates accepted Islam, who at that time was known as Francis Elizabeth Murray. So he said, Allah invites us into the dwelling of peace. We must work in Islam as the prophets worked. We must not be seekers of worldly fame or wealth, but workers for Allah, for his faith, for, pure, for poor humanity, for eternity. Work only for the things of the earth, and our reward will be dust and ashes. Work for Allah and his prophet, for Islam, and our work shall abide forever. And in that work we shall have eternal and everlasting peace. And as we are doing that, we will find trials, tribulations, difficulties and struggles of all kinds and all magnitudes, to which I want to finally state the poem written by Fatima Elizabeth, of whom our madrasa is inspired and also named. And she went through a lot of struggle in her life, uh, becoming a Muslim in the 1880s in Liverpool and being one of the first to experience Islamophobia, she mentioned this in a poem. A Muslimah's prayer, beset by numerous foes, concealed along the way, we must those enemies oppose and ever work and pray. They watch but to devour like ravening beasts of prey. If we, in an unguarding hour, but cease to work and pray, then may we ever heed the warning God has given that so we may in safety tread the road that leads to heaven. May Allah give us the ability to act upon this and bring this into our lives. So our madrasa has been here since 2014, uh, December, and we've had many students who have been with us since then, and they've been with us here. We also have a student who will be coming up forward. Now he's no longer a student. He is uh, a teacher, and he's also grown a beard in this journey. It's just been five years, which is great. Um, so we were supposed to be announcing our bait competition, which we'll leave till later. But I think it's important. There's two of our, uh, well, one staff member, one student. So Ustad Dawood is going to be coming forward very soon, and then followed by Daniel, and hopefully future Ustad Daniel, who will be coming. He's one of our students who uh, was happy to speak about our madrasa. Okay, so can I ask Ustad Dawood, so our very first presentation is about Fatima Elizabeth Front History, our madrasa itself. And for us, our madrasa is at the core. So everything else that started and you're going to see a presentation of uh, was kind of, um, you know, it's, it was born out of our madrasa through our classrooms, through our discussions with students, with parents, and also the wider community. So the very first um, uh, you know, the very first uh, session will be uh, regarding our madrasa itself. So can I please call upon uh, Ustad Dawood to come forward. He's the one I mentioned who was a student and now he is also a staff member in just five years. Can we have a round of a mashaAllah for Ustad Dawood? Okay, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh everyone. So my name is Dawood, as uh, Sahame just introduced me to. And uh, so I was asked to say a few words about my journey. Um, I was one of the first students to join Fatima Elizabeth Cates uh, with the intention of gaining a better understanding of Islam and perfecting my tajweed. When I first started, there was only one class of 30 students 
I had four teachers trying to teach students of different abilities and different ages, ranging from six to 14. I was 14, I was the oldest, and there was little kids. That could be my, like my little brother. Um, now, five years later, we have 14 classes, each class catering to the children of the same age group. I've really seen the academy flourish and become an amazing place for children to learn about their deen and perfect the qaida and tajweed. So, um, when I was my teachers always used to say, when I entered into the classroom, looked like a zombie, that I looked like I'd just woken up. Uh, Ustad, as Ustad Yahya could vouch for if he was here. Um, so now, five years later, nothing's changed. Ustad Hamid still greets me on a Sunday morning and says, Dave, how do you feel? And uh, I reply the same thing every single time. I'm tired. Um, however, this time, the tiredness is completely worth it. Because when you see your student excelling and enjoying their time, learning about Islam, it means that your efforts were worthwhile and gives you a feeling of satisfaction, um, that you are making a difference in their lives and that I believe that learning about Islam through a fun and engaging way is crucial as it means that they will want to continue educating themselves about their deen and will hopefully want to give back to the community inshallah. So I studied at Fatima Elizabeth Cates for a year, then uh, unfortunately I had to leave a year later as I was doing my GCSEs. But my brother, Zachariah, soon joined when he was seven, and every week I would try my best um, to go and pick him up at the end of the day, just to see the teachers, as they were also welcoming. I can safely say that the atmosphere that I experienced at Fatima Elizabeth Cates as a student was something I've never witnessed before. The whole mannerism of teaching, and the philosophy just made me constantly wanting more. I really felt at home. It was such a homely environment. The teachers have so much passion and enthusiasm when they teach and their efforts can really be shown through the student's satisfaction. Many of the students even said that they would rather come to, F, uh, to Fatima Elizabeth Cates than go to the school, which is, in my opinion, a massive achievement for the Maturasa itself. I love the environment and ethos so much that I decided to volunteer at Fatima Elizabeth Cates. I first started working in admin, doing bits and pieces, then started helping in different classes with Tajweed and Qaeda and covering for teachers when they needed. And now I am one of the teaching assistants uh, in Ibn Battuta on Sundays. So we're all like one big family at, at FEC. I'm so grateful to have such a fantastic group of people around me. And I thank Allah for giving me the opportunity to be a part of such an amazing organization. Thank you very much. Jazakallah for that, Ustad Dawood. Now we're going to have one of our students come forward who, um, inshallah, he's going to do well. You look uh, worried, but it's all fine, inshallah. So can we have a round of a mashallah for Daniel? My name is Dania and I am 11 years old this month. I've been a student at FEP for four years now. When I first started, I was shy and I was in class Mansa Musa and there were only three classrooms there. It's, it, it's amazing to see how Fatima Elizabeth Fontistory has expanded to six classrooms on Saturday and seven on Sunday. I grew from a sh shy student to a confident one, especially when I was elected for student shura. My favourite experience at the Madrasha would be the first year of Fatima Elizabeth on history because lots more, fre no, lots more students joined and I made lots of new friends. I've been camping three times with FEP now and I, I've learned how to ride the bike and, and have joined the Fasaikal the, the Fasaiko family bike rides. The best part is knowing Ustad Hamid and his family. He is so welcoming and always listens to me. He's also very generous and he's never had a weekend 
where there hasn't been cakes or biscuits in the office. Really, that's the most important thing. <laughs> he, keep up the good work, Ustad Hamid, and from all of our students, we wish you a happy five-year celebration and look forward to the next five years ahead, inshallah. Thanks for listening. Jazakallah for that, Daniel, and that was very, very good. Well done, mashallah, you did that without any kind of shivering or concern. Well done. Um, now, as I mentioned before, that we believe in this holistic approach. And when I mentioned the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that you know, he said, learn archery and the Quran. So we want our students to have the full holistic experience as uh, a Muslim. And as part of that, we also just recently started doing, or started our very own scouts group called were 31st Walthamstow Scouts, or Fatima Elizabeth Scouts. And as part of that, it, it fed into our whole experience of experiential learning. And for that, we're going to have a presentation now. And I would like to call uh, Sister Sarah and also uh, Brother Hasib. Could you please come to the stage? And Brother Mohsin as well. Okay, cool. Okay, salam alaikum everyone. My name's Bluebird, um, otherwise in real life known as Sarah, and I'm one of the scout leaders for 31st Walthamstow. Um, there's three of us speaking today, just a little bit about the history of scouting, the history of our scouting, and where we're looking to go. So, um, on the 1st of August 1907, 20 boys gathered together to join the first scout camp set up by a man called Robert Baden Powell on Brown Sea Island, Island near Dorset. So he decided to bring together people from different backgrounds and he hoped to bridge the gaps in society, give everyone the opportunity to learn new skills, which in today's climate we know is really, really relevant. At the time, it was a really radical idea, but it paved the way for what was to come. So scouting is now open to girls and boys, and there are over 50 million people involved in scouting worldwide, and that's the family that we've also joined. So that's a little bit about the background of scouts. And um, one of the reasons we feel it ties so closely with our Islamic values is that scouts are guided by integrity. So we act with integrity, uh, we're honest, we're trustworthy, and we're loyal. Uh, we have respect. We have respect for ourselves and respect for others. We care, so we support others and we take care of the world in which we live. Uh, we have belief and we explore our faith, our belief and our attitudes. And we cooperate, so the idea is that we make a positive difference um, with others and we also are here to make friends. So that's what scouting's about. And um, this is just a little bit about what being a scout is. So I've been involved in it since I was five, um, as a rainbow, a brownie, a girl guide and a guide leader. And now I've come over to scouts. And um, we just want to give kids this experience of getting outside, getting muddy, meeting new people, doing new things, pushing yourselves, trying really hard. If something doesn't work, giving it another go, doing it together, uh, learning about the world and caring for other people. So that's just a little introduction to Scouts and I'll hand it over. Elders, brothers, sisters, children, salam alaikum. My name is Mohsin or Hawk, from the scouting group. Um, no problem. So, my name is Hawk, from the scouting group, um, but Mossin is my actual name. Um, I'm the secretary, as well as the assistant beaver leader for our scout group. Um, and I'm talking to you about our journey of how FE Scouts came about. Um, around a year ago, my good wife, Samaya, mentioned to me about the importance of scouts, um, how it was important for her in her life, how the skills that she uh, learned 
was very important and gave her a platform to develop and you know, become a fully fledged individual in towards the wider society. Um, so I looked into scouts from there on and looked in our locality and found that there was a shortage and a problem with scout groups. Um, there was a massive waiting list and I'm sure some of you probably have already experienced if you've tried to apply or sign up for scouts, there's a massive waiting list in all scout groups. So from then on I discussed it with one of uh, the sisters, Aisha, who is a part of our scout group as well. She's a assistant cub leader um, and when I discussed it with her, she mentioned, let's speak to Ustad Hamid um, and see what he has to say. So we approached Ustad, and Ustad, being a visionary he is, he basically said, why, do, why don't we implement scouts within Fatima Elizabeth? Um, and that's what we essentially did. Um, I think it encompasses exactly what Osad has already touched on today uh, with regards to all the different skills and um, future skill sets that they can develop and really help, them, uh, help the children to become great individuals in, in their lifetimes. Um, so that's a short background on that, inshallah. You know, a name of a tree or an animal. Being the child that I am, as soon as uh, Sarah suggested it, I just said, oh, we've got to do animals. So that kind of explains raised eyebrows when we name uh, ourselves as an animal. So hopefully that clears that. So with anything, um, the strength of one is always stronger in the strength of a team. So you can see this is, alhamdulillah, our core. One of the key things that we have, which is our advantage, is that we have a lot of adults from the start, from when we were the embryonic stage. So many adults and myself being a parent from the Fatima Elizabeth family, wanted to give up our time, is voluntary, um, and we all shared the same kind of passions and ideas for our children. Um, where do we go from where we are at the moment? I'm sure as parents, you all know that there are kind of worrying times. At the moment when they're like primary age, little, they, you know, they come to you, they cuddle you, but eventually there's a time where they're going to grow, they're going to be a little bit more independent, they're going to go to secondary schools, inshallah college, and inshallah, you know, further on, wherever they decide to go. So things that my fears are, is that once they leave, and I'm not dropping them to school, they're leaving the house saying, Salaamu Alaikum, I'll see you later, inshallah, that is all it is. With crime, with the way society is, social media, what do we have to kind of protect our children. What we do have is us, a community. The Fatima Elizabeth departments illustrated on the cake um, with everything that they do and also the scouting family. So we started with beavers, which were six year olds. And in Charlotte, in a very short time, we grew and we had beavers and cubs. And we started in September and Alhamdulillah in January, we're opening a whole new section of scouts who will be 10 year olds. Once they eventually grow up, they will go into explorers and inshallah we hope they will go full circle and become leaders as well. What the future actually holds is that I didn't know anyone in this room. I look over and I see so many familiar faces now. The people standing behind me, I didn't know them either. I didn't know their children, I didn't know them. And inshallah as a community, through the scouting family, we can gain recognition, we can build relationships, friendships, and inshallah we can encompass a faith of looking after our other children. So when I see children at Madrasa or in the high street and they come and say Salaamu Alaikum, it's created that safety that their parents can see that there's a familiar face that they recognize who is an adult. I can see them and recognize them. And if ever there is a point where they're alone or they're in danger, there's so many of us that look after the children. And inshallah, that's the purpose of the Scouts family. And inshallah, we can look after each other. Our children can look after us. And we can continue to grow from there. Jazakallah khair for your time. Thank you very much. If you have any kind of questions about Scouts, please do visit us at the desk. We've got a fantastic admin team. Just um, email us and at some point we will uh, reply to you. I'm just joking, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Just okay. like, thank so you we so will much. move on uh, for now. Now, as I mentioned, what we, with our madrasa, we want it to be as inclusive as possible. And this, again, vision and this inspiration is from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. As he worked with his companions, 
with different qualities, different abilities, mixed abilities. And there were many companions who had certain qualities that he worked with. And when he worked on them, they were able to change the world for the better. Now, in our madrasa, we also have many students with many special qualities. And what we would like right now is for one of our staff members, he is Ustad Daniel. He also worked before for uh, the NHS as a, um, you know, for their special needs uh, department and also for a local school. And also, alhamdulillah, Ustad Daniel has given us his time on the weekends. Many of you have known him, many of you have spoken to him as well. He will come to you, come to us now and speak about our special educational needs department because he is our Senko and he was our very first Senko who joined our madrasa. So can we have a round of a mashallah for Ustad Daniel? Zakala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So alhamdulillah we're here at our five year celebration. So I joined the then called FEC um, in 2016 once Molana Hamid recognised that there was a growing population of students with special needs at our madrasa. So essentially the madrasa needed um, a senko. So as Molana mentioned, I am a speech therapist by profession uh, and I do work for the NHS. Um, we often get told that you are an SEN madrasa. I think that's because of our reputation that we've got, which isn't true. Um, Alhamdulillah, we are a mainstream madrasa that tries our best to cater for those with special needs. At the moment, we have a little over 10% of students who have some form of SEN. Um, currently, we have myself and uh, Ustadi Yasmin, who essentially looks after the, the SEN department at the moment. But we are always looking to expand our department um, as we grow. So, thinking about some of the needs that we have at our madrasa, we have students who have an edu um, educational healthcare plan, we have those with autism, those with hearing loss, visual impairment, learning disabilities, um, some students have emotional and behavioural difficulties as well. Um, really, our goal is to try to make all the lessons that we have pitched appropriately at the student's level, um, and so they can gain the, mess, um, the most from their lessons. We run a number of different approaches at, that we have at our at the moment. We've had blind students before as well, where we've had specialist apps where they can listen to Quran um, that can help with memorization and qaida. Um, for some of our younger students who might have difficulties with attention and listening, we run um, attention and listening groups um, and qaida game groups where they can work on their turn taking and listening in a more relaxed environment. Um, more recently as well, we were looking at uh, another approach something called zones of regulation, creating safe spaces inside the classroom for those students as well. Um, as well as introducing things like Lego therapy. So we're always looking to be creative and innovative in, in terms of the approach that we do with some of our SCN students. Um, generally for all parents, they do know that if they have any concerns about SCN, they can talk to myself and Ustad Hamid. Um, one of the things that we do request is that you have your medical reports, that you bring it to us, um, so we can get an idea about the levels and, and where they're at at the moment. Um, and I want to end with just a reminder for essentially all staff and volunteers at, at FEP. We've all been blessed with an opportunity to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's And I would just like you to always keep that in mind, inshallah. Um, and lastly, jazakallah khair to Malana Hamid for creating this wonderful madrasa that we've all been able to benefit from. Um, inshallah, mabrook on the five years. And inshallah, we look forward to the many years to come. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah for that, um, Ustad Danya. Okay, so um, as we started growing and as the months and years went by, we were always aware of making our curriculum uh, as relevant as possible for our students. And as part of that, we felt there were many ideologies out there which students were being affected by intellectually. So because our madras is not just about reciting from the Qur'an. That's a very important part, which is called Tajweed. However, it's also about understanding of the text and what may be contradictions between them and what, you know, from the apparent uh, may be opposed to science. So as we went further ahead, we wanted our students to be, you know, we wanted them to be confident Muslims and to be able to go out 
and confidently uh, express themselves as Muslims. And as a part of that, we felt there was a need to focus on science and Islam. And that, that, that's why, you know, before some of you already came to our events about evolution in Islam, atheism in Islam. And again, all of that started from our classrooms. So our madrasa has been at the core of giving birth to all these different uh, projects and departments that we've started. And one of them now, which we've requested uh, Sheikh Uwais Iqbal to speak about, and he's going to come forward and talk to us about our department. Our department, uh, he'll tell you about how many members we have and everything else. And it was, I think, at the core of our curriculum that we want our students to have confidence, and therefore we still want to be a part of this team. And Alhamdulillah, they came and spoke to them about various topics. We, you know, we had an open Q and A where we said to the students, "Look, if you have any questions whatsoever, you have any kind of doubts, whether it's related to Islam and science, or it's related to atheism, or the hereafter, the problem of evil, whatever it may be, whatever you've heard at schools, please do ask our professors who are proficient." from that perspective in these topics. So Alhamdulillah, we can confidently say that we facilitated this for our students and they are more confident in some of these topics. So can we please have a round of a MashaAllah for Sheikh Uwais Iqbal, who's one of the members of the team. Jazakallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa. والسلام والسلام على عباده الذين استفاء ما بعد قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الكلمة الحكمة ضالة المؤمن فإنما وجدها فهو أحق بها رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي So I'm just going to speak briefly about uh, the Institute for Science for Islamic Science and Philosophy that we have at Fatima Elizabeth Cates. Um, I'm a new member to the team. I was introduced uh, very recently, and this is a, a very recent initiative. So I'm going to talk through a couple of the things we're, we're involved in. Uh, but I think before that, I think it's important to understand why, this, why, it's, uh, why, that, why it's important uh, to have an outlet like this for the, for the intellectual Muslims. Uh, so we know from Rasulullah wasallam that he tells us that um, a wise word, it's the lost property of a believer. So wherever he comes across a wise word, he has, he has the most right in terms of uh, claiming that right word and calling, calling that his own. And Imam Ghazali, rahimahullah, he famously, he quoted once and he remarked that whoever doesn't ha understand or whoever doesn't have a foundation in the principle of, principles of logic and even to some extent philosophy, he has no grounding in his knowledge and his ulum. And Imam Ghazali is one of the most influ influential scholars that we have in our, in our history and our heritage. Uh, so within, within our religion, we, we have an intellectual, uh, we have an intellectual, we have intellectual institutions and we have intellectual, we have a very rich intellectual heritage. And this manifests itself in two primary sciences. One is known as Ilmul Kalam or the, the, the science of uh, dialectical theology and engaging with theology and uh, uh, buttressing uh, doctrinal beliefs that we have as Muslims, as Muslims with, uh, with proofs and evidences. And the other is around falsafa, around Islamic philosophy. So from a position of, uh, from a foundation of Islamic principles uh, and usul, uh, going through rational inquiry to answer some questions we may, ha we may have about the, about the realities of this universe and that we have about life in and of itself. So we've, we've realized that we're living within this society, there's areas of conflict that we come into. And the, the idea behind this, uh, this institute and this avenue uh, of, of Fatima Elizabeth Cates is to try and address some of those areas and to try and bring in, uh, bring in specialists in all of these areas to have these discussions and to try and address some of these issues we're having uh, from, on an intellectual front. So the team itself is made up of uh, a number of individuals. And subhanAllah, we have, uh, we're quite blessed in that we have a team which, is, which has somewhat of a global reach. Uh, we have a global reach, but then we have uh, individuals who have skill sets in specific areas, so much so that we have uh, professors, uh, PhD students, um, tra tra classically trained ulama who are interested in developing in these areas. Uh, across across the board. Uh, so, in terms in terms of the leadership, we have uh, Dr. Shuaib, we have Morana Usman, and we have uh, Morana Hamid, um, who, who everyone is familiar with. And then we have um, we have other we have other individuals based in Turkey who are 
uh, who, are, who are academics who've published um, papers, who've published articles, and who've actually published books in and of themselves uh, on Islamic philosophy. And then we also have professors in Islamic philosophy from the, from the Muslim world. Uh, and then we have other people who come from different backgrounds. Uh, so we have uh, Sister Noor, who, who comes from an astrophysics background. We have, other, we have uh, Morana Shibli uh, from Toronto in Canada, who comes from a traditionally trained um, scholarship background, Anumia background, but he's pursuing um, further studies in philosophy to try and, uh, to try and engage and to try and uh, bring, bring the two areas together. If you can, next slide. Uh, so in terms of some of the things we've done, uh, we were trying to address some of, some of the issues around atheism and, uh, and Islam uh, because we know that living in, in the West, there's a, uh, atheism is one of the main areas that cause, uh, where people find doubts and people have problems with their faith. So creating an open space where we can have these discussions and we can address these intellectual issues because these intellectual issues, if we don't address them, then they'll, rot, uh, they'll, they'll develop and they'll rot inside an individual and they'll cause an individual to lose faith. Uh, so, the, so we have these uh, events where we have these open forums to have these discussions, discussing arguments for the proof of Allah, for, for the proof of the existence of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, uh, discussing ideas around atheism, and also addressing some concerns around uh, evolution, some doubts that may come about due to evolution. Uh, and then we've also had some affiliated events with other institutions. Uh, so we've had events with um, uh, Rumi's Cave, we've had events with Ibrahim College, um, and we've had events with other institutions where we're trying to address some of these sim similar, similar ideas and problems. And then we've also had online courses where we've, uh, where some of the some of the team members have gone through uh, classical texts, uh, bringing out some of these uh, problems and bringing out some of these topics and making an area and forum of discussion. And perhaps one of the most exciting endeavors um, of the entire initiative so far is that we have a, we've put in an application for a grant from the John Ten Templeton Foundation. And if, if you're not aware, the John Templeton Foundation, it's a global institution that funds uh, projects around uh, science and religion. And they fund programs, uh, and, the, and the, 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 the funding, uh, the, the application that we've put in uh, has a funding uh, cap of around $3 million. So it's a big, it's a big project and it's a big initiative uh, which, which we've put out three years worth of work to, to focus on. And it's a collaboration between Fatima Elizabeth uh, Institute of Islamic Science and Philosophy and with, Ibra with uh, Sawas and Ibrahim College with Sheikh Samsud Duha. Uh, and the project in and of itself, it's split into seven parts uh, to try and engage uh, with different areas around uh, evolution in Islam, quantum mechanics in Islam and atheism in Islam. Uh, and some of, the, some of the deliverables and the outputs of the project will be uh, public conferences, uh, documentaries, YouTube series, um, a diploma uh, for, for anybody who's interested in philosophy, science and religion, um, opportunities for younger ulama who are developing uh, in traditional Islamic studies but for an opportunity for them to get involved, and also books uh, uh, on these issues and, and a Qur'an project which is looking at trying to bring um, the Qur'an tafsir to a digital platform uh, which is uh, an interesting endeavour. Uh, so I'm, gonna, I'm going to stop there, but this is a, an interesting initiative and it's something we've not uh, perhaps seen before um, as Muslims living in the West, like a, a, a forward-thinking initiative to try and um, engage uh, actively, proactively in a positive manner with some of the intellectual issues we've been having. We've been having. So I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he puts barakah in this project and he, uh, he makes this uh, endeavor successful and ultimately he accepts it from us. Um, I, I will be around um, after, uh, after the event, so if anybody has any questions, um, feel free to come and have a chat. So, Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah Sheikh uh, Wais for that. So Alhamdulillah, there's interesting times ahead um, in regards to our, um, you know, Fatima Elizabeth Institute of Islam, Science and Philosophy, where we will be uh, producing um, resources as well for teenagers and hopefully other madrasas as well. Uh, you can find out more about that from our website. Um, which will give you a link to our specific website for our institute, uh, which is related baking to Islam competition, uh, which was related to the Sunnah foods. So there was competition, the fun aspect, and again, looking at it from the Sunnah perspective, there were many uh, children who baked over the past few days, and then there was a competition today, and there was a panel of judges. And they will now, inshallah, announce and just talk about what they did and what it, what's going to happen with that. So can we have them come forward on the stage, please? Jazakallah. Okay, so they're just going to make their way. Okay. 
Assalamualaikum. Okay, mashallah, alhamdulillah, we've had so many entries, 25 entries to be precise, on the Sunnah baking competition, and we were really surprised with the amount of uh, interest there was for the competition, and really happy to see how many people entered and the detail of information that the children put in, um, of course, with the support of family and friends. Um, it was fantastic. Some really great teamwork going on, um, it, really good individual work going on. We've had things that are decorated amazingly, things that tasted fantastic and the accuracy of information was amazing on a lot of the um, entries that went, came in. Um, so we're going to start with, we've got quite a number of um, really high high scores. So we're going to start with one of the runners up first of all. So first of all, can we have um, Cakes and More up, please, for their vanilla sponge cake with dates. Are they here? Mashallah. Mashallah. She cooked, she baked a really nice cake. What was your cake again? Do you want to come and tell it us what you baked? It was a vanilla sponge cake and we topped it with um, books um, resembling the, the knowledge of this academy that teaches us. Oh, mashallah. And what was your Sunnah ingredient? It was kajur that we got from Umrah when we went on holiday. Oh, mashallah. Well done. Okay. Secondly, we have Jakub Vauda, who cooked a Russian Medovic honey. I hope I'm saying that right. Is he here? Oh, mashallah. So he gets the cake. What did you bake? Do you want to tell everybody what you baked? A cake. A cake. Okay. What was your simple ingredient in your cake? Honey. Honey? Okay. Lovely. Fantastic. Mashallah. You get a five-year celebration cake for that. Well done. Sakallah. Next up, we have Radia and Mariam for honey cake and honey buttercream. Are they here still? Does mum want to come up with her? Does mum want to come up alone? Do you want to tell us what your daughter made? Uh, I'm quite sure I can remember. Um, so I think we made a honey cake with um, honey buttercream and a honey butterscotch drizzle. Mashallah. So they found the recipe. I did help them with the sponge. We don't actually have an oven at the moment. No kitchen, but I improvised a small multi-purpose oven. Oh, and they did the rest. They decorated and made all the bits and pieces. Oh, excellent. Mashallah. Well done. Just like that. Okay, so now we have a runner-up prize going to Sunnah Delights for honey and cinnamon cakes. Is Sunnah Delights here? Yes, I do. Oh. Mashallah. <laughs> Mashallah, well done. Do you want to tell us what you made? We made a honey and cinnamon cake. We had honey in our frosting and honey in our butter. Yeah. And we're going to do a honey and milk. Oh, well done. Mashallah. We're going to have to share this. Here you go. Hold that. And 25 year celebration cakes as well for that. Well done. Here you go. Mashallah. 
Okay, so next we have the uh, second runner-up. We've got Benjamin and Sophia Ahmed for olive oil and almond buns with pomegranate. I hope I've said that right. Mashallah. Do you want to tell us a bit about your bake? There you go, there's a white special for me. Come on. What did you make? We made a pomegranate cake. And it was made of... It had to be... Olive oil. Mashallah, well done. Congratulations. And you get a thumbs up for that. Okay, so our top prize goes to Amara Haider for cooking um, baking and olive oil and black seed bread rolls. Is she here? Amara? Amara Haider? No? Okay. The winning prize. Uh, so what we'll do, we'll keep it. And we'll we'll contact the, the parents and then we'll give, it, give them the prize. But they've won this fabulous hamper with a Nadia Hussein cookbook and a number of other similar ingredients and uh, things in there as well. But everyone, thank you so much for contributing and taking part in the competition. Mashallah. Okay, I would like to say um, that, um, again, this competition, it seems like it's been very easy, but there's been a lot of effort that's gone into this by our staff, by our teachers, and also by our parents as well, who have taken out their times, uh, you know, to, taken out their time to make sure that it was a success. And alhamdulillah, students were not only having fun, but they were learning about the, the food of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they were trying to, you know, uh, merge the two. So the fun aspect, but also at the same time, learning about Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the foods that he ate. So the best of both worlds. Now, the next uh, presentation is going to be very, very, uh, for me, it's a very important part of my life because um, I felt that it helped me quite a bit as well. And uh, you will hear more about this, but I'll just give you very briefly where it started off. So there, was, there were two parents, okay? So, um, uh, so we had, um, uh, uh, and they'll introduce themselves, we had brother Gary, uh, who's, who's going to be coming in very shortly. He and his wife, they both came to me and we had a meeting in their house and uh, we spoke about cycling because they are avid cyclists, they cycle to Madrasa um, every single week. There was only one week I think where it snowed that they uh, couldn't cycle and I did ask brother Gary whether he cycled and he said no, but they came by bus at that time. Um, it's our Cycle Club, so Fatima Elizabeth uh, Cycle Club. And we are now also a, a nationally recognized cycle club uh, in the UK as well. And just like we said, Islam is not just about the spiritual, but also about the physical as well, which we learn from the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about running, about swimming, about archery, uh, even walking barefooted. So I would like to now introduce uh, Brother Umar Gary Paul Mitchell to the stage, who will be coming through the middle on our penny farthing, inshallah. Okay, yes, so just to let you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, can we have a round of a mashallah for the Umar Gary? Assalamu alaikum everyone. 
speak into the mic. Okay. Salam alaikum, everyone. So, hands up if you've ever cycled before. Oh, mashallah, why don't you come on the rides? Hands up if you've been on a cycle ride. Oh, that's good. And keep your hands up if it's the first group ride that you did. Okay, not too bad. Okay. So, um, for those of you that haven't been on a cycle club ride yet, hands up if you like cakes. Ah, now the cake theme has been running through this evening. So if we could have the next slide, please. Next slide. Thank you. Sorry. What are the attractions of coming on a cycle uh, group ride? Well, number one, the cafe stops and the cakes. Very important. Another important thing is you can enjoy the cake and it's guilt-free because you're going to be burning off the calories on the way home. How about that? The other good thing is the company. It's really important that we've already talked about building the community. And what we do on the rides is build community and we want a community with a strong Islamic, Islamic ethos. Uh, and we get to know each other a bit better, the, the other parents and the students, that's really important. The other thing is getting out in the countryside. The fresh air, who wants to get out of the house more? Explore, yeah, yeah, explore some parks, discover some new green spaces, spaces you didn't know about. That's what we try and do on the rides. And who doesn't want to get fitter? Any hands up? There you go. So I want to see you all signing up for the rides, inshallah. So we do a range of um, for cycle club rides, which um, Sister Sarah is going to be talking about and explaining all the um, for all the different abilities you might have. Um, but I've been asked to do a fun fact quiz uh, to round off the evening. So I'm not sure if it's going to be fun. But it's going to be a quiz. So uh, next slide, please. So have a guess, anybody? How many different cake shops or cafes do you think we've visited over the last couple of years? Not a hundred. More than seven. A bit more. Okay, 29. And quite a few of them we've been to more than once. We've got some favourites. Uh, Belgique is a favourite. We've been to Belgique in Epping and Thaden Boyce in Wanstead. And La Gelateria in the Olympic Village is another favourite for the ice cream there. Okay, so 29 cake shops. How many different London boroughs do you think we've cycled through? Anybody? More? More than that? Higher? 14 London boroughs we've been in. We've been in more boroughs, more than half of the boroughs in London. North to Enfield and beyond, east to Redbridge and Newham, uh, south of the river to Greenwich, west to Westminster. How many different parks do you think we've visited? Shout out a number. No, 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 not that many. Okay, so we've been to 17 parks. Springfield Park, Olympic Park, Victoria Park, Valentine's Park, Claybury Park, Hyde Park, Jubilee Park, Grinch Park. We've been in Lee Valley and the Rodin River Valley, Epping Forest and Hainault Forest, the Wetlands, Fairlock Waters, uh, and the Marshes, Walthamstow, Hackney and Tottenham. Lots of green spaces there. Now, which different ways do you think we've crossed the River Thames? Give me one. A bridge. Okay, what other ways can you cross the Thames? We haven't done the boat yet, but we've done the tunnel, and we've done the Emirates cable car on one ride. So we've still got to do the, the Woolwich uh, ferry on a ride. Now, which of the for cycle club riders do you think has the largest collection of bikes, or has had the largest collection of bikes? Yes, Mr. <laughs> Hamid has had. The, the, uh, the, I was very privileged to ride the penny farthing there. He's had a cargo bike, a tagger bike, numerous road bikes and numerous um, hybrid bikes. But who do you think out of the cyclists gets the most punctures on the rides? Yeah. Not me, no? <laughs> okay. It's, it's one of our professors from the... Uh, um, it's Molana Usman, who uh, managed to get three punctures on the ride to Cambridge. Every ride, he normally gets a puncture, but I love him for it because he provides the opportunity to do good deeds. We get to fix his bike for him, and he never fails to finish a ride. He always gets back on the bike and finishes the ride. And I think 
Um, we can look at a bike ride as a metaphor for our life's journey. We have to prepare before we go on the ride. There's ups and downs in the journey. There's struggles. There's punctures. We need to fix them. But we need to keep going and we need to focus on the destination. And the destination is not the cake shop. Over to Sarah. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum everybody. I know many of you know me as the bike lady, but my name is actually Sarah. Uh, the other bike lady of course is Carolyn, uh, who's Gary's wife, who's going to be coming up in a minute. Uh, so I'm very briefly going to just tell you a little bit about how for Cycles started and most importantly let you know how all of you guys can get involved as well. Uh, so can the next slide please. Um, so in case you haven't got it by now, Ustad Hamid is quite keen on the idea of teaching Islam in a holistic way. And uh, the reason why all of us are going on about cycling all the time is, like Islam, cycling is also holistic. So it doesn't just benefit your body, it benefits the whole person, so mind and soul as well. So when you think about cycling, you probably, uh, it's obvious that it benefits your health, uh, but maybe there's some other things on here that you haven't thought about. Um, how cycling can develop good character, um, and also how cycling can actually bring us closer to, closer to Allah as well. Also, just like Islam, cycling uh, is not just about the individual, but cycling uh, benefits the whole community as well. So it's about developing healthier, happier, safer communities too. I haven't even mentioned how you can lose weight. Uh, well, it depends on how much cake you eat. Um, but how you can uh, save money and also cut your journey times as well. So hopefully, inshallah, everyone's feeling convinced now to give it a try. Uh, so next slide, please. Uh, so in 2017, the idea of the cycle was born. Uh, brother Gary, uh, Carolyn and Ustad Hamid came up with the idea of our madrasa having its very own cycle club. And in August, the very first family ride took place to Springfield Park. And uh, there's hopefully a lovely photo on the screen of uh, these first riders uh, who were all the parents, students and teachers from the madrasa. From here, the family rides really took off. We now have family rides every school holiday, and they're always fully booked. We have more than 50 people on every ride. And over the last year alone, we've had more than 143 different people coming on our family rides, which is amazing. We've been to the wetlands, we've been to Olympic Park, we've been to Victoria Park. Um, and for many of our riders, this is the first time that they've had the opportunity to get out and ride together as a family. So uh, if you haven't been on a family ride before, then uh, please do join us on the ones that we'll be doing next year, inshallah. Uh, so next slide, please. After the first family ride, Brother Gary started the Physical Parents and Friends group. And they have rides on a Sunday every month. They've been all over the place uh, to Epping Forest, Greenwich Observatory, and uh, even had the opportunity to ride around a traffic-free Oxford Circus on Christmas Day. Next slide, please. So the, over, um, the, the kind of overarching goal behind the cycle is to create a really kind of friendly and positive vibe around cycling and make sure that everybody can feel welcome regardless of their ability and uh, we all support each other. And I think this was probably best exemplified by the Cambridge ride that happened this year. A group of uh, the cycle parents and friends cycled 56 miles to Cambridge. On They managed to choose one of the hottest days of the year. And it was an amazing achievement, mashallah, because a lot of the riders had only been riding in the last year or two. Very mixed abilities, mixed bikes, but the whole um, idea was that everybody would support each other and ride together, and they all made it there as one team. Uh, we'll also be doing the Cambridge ride again next year as well, inshallah, if you missed it this year. Uh, next slide, please. In uh, 2018, we started a new project which is working with two local mosques, so uh, Mansfield and Queens Road mosques. Um, one part of this has been uh, delivering lessons to children who attend Queens Road Madrasa. So over the summer, we taught 40 different children of all abilities, so those who couldn't ride, uh, right up to more experienced riders uh, who did on-road training with us. Next slide, please. And one of the other big successes from this MOSS project has been our Family Cycling Fun Day. I don't think anyone was more surprised than us when more than a thousand people turned up to this event. Uh, we had panic phone calls to ice cream vans and the food pretty much ran out in the first half an hour. Um, so that is our top priority for next year, making sure that the food is sorted. Uh, but it was amazing to see so many local families coming together 
uh, just having a fun day out and trying different cycling activities and hopefully coming away feeling inspired about how they can cycle with their families. So we really are unique. I think we probably are the first madrasa in the country which has its own cycle club and this is being recognised. So Brother Gary won an award a couple of months ago for um, Volunteer of the Year for all the work that he's been doing <coughs> to uh, organise the rides. And we also won an award for our fun day. Uh, we, it was the best family-friendly cycling event with the London Cycling Campaign. And we were also recognised at the Faith and Belief Community Awards as well. Uh, so final slide is what are you waiting for? Inshallah, I mean it was a pretty good uh, show of hands people have been on our rides but if you haven't yet been on a ride there's no real excuse because whoever you are we've got something for you. Sisters, brothers, children, teenagers, families, uh, everything is uh, mentioned on the slide here but I just wanted to highlight a couple of things. So one is Cycle Brothers. Uh, Cycle Brothers was started by two FEC par uh, FEP parents, Mossin and Mebs, and uh, they run rides every other Sunday for brothers. So uh, to find out about their rides, if you go to the website which is mentioned on the slide. And uh, if you would love the idea of cycling, but perhaps you don't know how to cycle, we offer free cycle training. We've got brother and sister instructors who can teach you as a family group or one-to-one. -one. And the cycle skills training is suitable for everybody. So whether you've never been on a bike, right up to experienced riders who want on, uh, advanced on-road training. Uh, so if you go to the link that's on the slide, you can sign up for the lessons. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to Carolyn, who is going to briefly tell you about a new initiative that's starting next year called Team Bikers. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Um, I'm aware that we're running late. I won't keep you for very long. So I'm not as tall as Sarah, but I can stand on my tiptoes. <laughs> um, so one of the new initiatives that will be um, starting under Fair Cycle and Cycle Sisters is the Teen Bikers Rides for Teenage Girls. There will be four rides happening next year, um, maybe more after that. The first one will be in the February half term on the Thursday um, and then the others will be um, on Sundays or in school holidays. And Seema at the back there, just raise your hand for us, Seema is going to be leading these rides. Um, and there'll be uh, all the usual nice cakes and attractions. It's going to be specifically for girls aged 12 to 17. Um, it'd be really nice to encourage more women to benefit from cycling. We've had a lot of women that have come back to cycling, you know, in their 30s, 40s and 50s. Um, so it'd be really nice to, um, for, for, to get younger girls so that they don't have to miss out and come back to cycling later in life, but, you know, start cycling at a much earlier age. There'll be a very safe space. Um, all the ride leaders will be trained ride leaders, DBS checked, um, experienced marshals, um, fantastic role models in themselves. Um, so if you'd like to know more, um, you can sign up via, uh, just speak to Sarah or myself or Seema, um, or look out for the information when it comes out in the um, FEP newsletters. Thank you. Jazakallah for that and uh, I want to take this opportunity as well to thank everyone who's participated and worked for and uh, worked very hard for the Cycle Club. Um, Brother Gary who's been on all our rides, he's trained a lot of the riders to go as far as Cambridge and uh, I mentioned to Brother Gary as he was about to come on his penny farthing, my, I was so excited that my mind went blank and I almost forgot his name and I forgot Sister Carolyn's name but I would mention that Sister Carolyn who was here it was uh, in her house and Brother Gary's, where we, we spoke about the for Cycle Club and the importance of cycling and why we need to have a cycling club in the madrasa. And it was over just a basic, simple cup of tea that we went ahead with it. And now, alhamdulillah, we have a, a club with all the statistics and numbers that you heard. Uh, and then now, alhamdulillah, we have Sister Sarah Javed, who is running our projects uh, and working really hard behind them as well. And if anyone else wants to come on board, we're always welcome, always, you know, we're, our, our, our doors are always open for everyone and anyone. So Jazakallah for that. Okay, so now we're going to, we're hopefully finishing very soon. We're now moving over to a very interesting part of our madrasa, and which initially started off as a punishment, but now it went beyond. And uh, we took it, and it, it all just happened by itself. And, uh, you know, it became more serious. And then you will see a part of that. 
and that is Fatima Elizabeth Choir. Okay, so we're going to be um, inviting some of our students who are going to come on the stage, and it's going to be their very first time, uh, and it's going to be the very first time for our choir, which, inshallah, in January. We, so what we did so far was just a trial. In January, inshallah, we're going to have more students who can uh, join in. So watch out for our WhatsApp messages and email messages. And inshallah, if you like what you see, you can also make sure that your children are a part, a part of it. And I actually attended and looked at and observed some of the sessions and lessons. I would like to thank Sister Ustada Marzuka, who has studied this properly. It, you know, just the art form of our voice and singing and the throat. And, uh, you know, and it's very much part of our tradition. Um, you know, the, the, the children, the people at the time of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they used to sing uh, praises of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. And the nasheed that's going to be sung today is going to be in the English style. And uh, Ustada Marzuka can tell us more about that as well. So can we please have a round of a mashaAllah for all our choir students. So can they please come aboard the stage and then follow Ustada Marzuka from there. Right, so can uh, all of you start stepping this way a bit, please? And just... Oh, oh, oh. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> Decided before that, inshallah, um, they'll do it on their own first. 
But the second time that we do it, we want the audience to also take part in this form of dhikr, as we call it. So are we ready for this? How do you feel about this? Great. Good. Okay, great. Yes, right. great. Allah. I feel uh, so great. This time, especially the Arabic, try and come along. Say I feel great. I don't feel great. <laughs> Salli Rabbi ala Nabi Al-Hashimi Mutalibi Sahibi Aspana Sabi Wa Alihi Wa Sahbihi Oh Allah to us and the dear We seek to guide our souls around So first of all, I would like to say well done to all the students. A lot of them had to come in very early to Madrasa on uh, Sunday mornings. They had to come in way before. There was actually one student who had to come and his two brothers had to come with him. Uh, they were not so happy about that, but inshallah Allah will reward them for that as well. But well done, all of you who went through a lot of um, you know, sacrifice. And like I mentioned, initially it was just, we just, you know, it was almost like a punishment that we were trying to just play with, but then it became serious and there was so much more and we want more students to take part in this because it is a tradition uh, and it is very much part of our faith and is part of our heritage. So, we, one of our teachers, uh, Ustad Nadda, she put together a video just to talk about at the end about our plan for the future, inshallah, um, because in our hand we can just plan and make effort and actual change is only in Allah's hands. And we must always look unto Allah to guide us and help us and support us in everything that we do, whether it's uh, you know, in any, any aspect or field of our lives. So that video, inshallah, will be sent to all parents. And uh, this video that we're making of our presentations will also be up. And that will be added to it as well. Uh, our madrasa started in December 2014 only had about uh, 30 students with about five members of staff and alhamdulillah from there uh, we expanded and we now have just over 360 students with about 40 members of staff. Uh, most of us did not know each other before, uh, I didn't know most of the parents, alhamdulillah they believed in our vision, they believed in what we stood for uh, because the very first time when I spoke about this I could still remember that time and uh, my mom was also in the audience at that time and um, may Allah have mercy on her. So, um, coming back to the point that in that audience, there were parents who were just listening to me talking about a theory and talking about the kind of vision that we had for our children and the kind of change that we wanted. At that time, we hadn't taught a single lesson as a madrasa. We obviously had our own you know, experiences and our backgrounds, um, but um, those two parents believed in us at that time. Some of them also became uh, teachers and they were with us. 
and uh, they've been um, many of them are still with us till this day and they're always there and I also want to thank our parents and teachers for also the constructive criticism that we get because without us looking deeper into our problems ourselves we cannot um, you know progress uh, in any walk of life so we need to have a holistic way of thinking of looking at the world only then we will go further because Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he had he gave this holistic vision and this holistic world view it wasn't just restricted to worship or types of worship or things like that it was more than that and that's why coming back to the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said learn archery and the Quran and again it teaches us that look you should focus on your physical and the metaphysical or the spiritual side of our lives as well and all this goes hand in hand you know Prophet Sallallahu did say that a stronger believer is, is more better in the eyes of Allah than a weaker one and that goes in both the physical and also the spiritual sense so this is very important for us you know Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he arranged uh, swimming races he arranged uh, you know running races at his time Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also had races with his wives so Aisha Radiallahu and has story we have in written evidence you know he was doing the physical alongside the spiritual because he understood uh, when it comes to a person we are you know we are uh, we are beings that have more than just the spirit it's the physical yes the spiritual and the intellectual and that's why if you you would have noticed in our presentation that we're trying our best utmost best and we we will always be trying there will never be a time when we can say that yes we've reached we've done it and these are our principles no uh, and I was speaking to some of our teachers that look, we should have our own, uh, you know, uh, uh, end of you know d d date deadline to say, look, maybe ten years. We need to try our best until ten years. Have a proper reflection of what we are doing, and maybe restart. But think again. But keep on trying. Keep on thinking beyond, um, you know, what, what we just have in front of us. And that's the most important thing that we cannot become stagnant we cannot become stagnant we have to constantly be moving we have to constantly be thinking because the times are always moving and the times are always moving around us we need to move with them but we take with us we take with us the principles set by our text the holy quran and also taught to us as a you know experienced living uh, mode of being by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions. And the way to do it is to have this um, you know, holistic approach. So that's where our madrasa is coming from. And as you saw uh, from the madrasa, we, we want to think beyond the madrasa. And we're thinking, what else can benefit us in the physical, spiritual, in every way? So for cycle is something very important for us because cycling itself is not just a physical exercise, but also, in a sense, it clears your mind. Um, that, it's helped me quite a lot. And Alhamdulillah, I even had the chance to ride from here to Paris. We did it for charity uh, over three days. And uh, we also rode to Cambridge, just pedaling away. And just to mention a very interesting story, as I was uh, riding to Cambridge, it was the same time that there was a very big, we'll call it a conference, in a small town called Dewsbury, uh, 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 as part of the Tablighi Jamaat and the Markers. Uh, it's just something that I remembered. And uh, as I was riding, and uh, one of the elders from the Markers, he called, he, he phoned and he said, where are you, I can't see you. So at that moment, because I was pedaling and I was on my bike, I said, I'm in pedal Jamaat. So he thought I was actually, uh, in Urdu, pedal means walking, but actually in English it's uh, pedaling. So he straight away put the phone down due to the principle. But anyway, I thought I'll just mention, that was in my head for about 10 minutes. I thought I'll just take it out. So um, coming back to the point, that is this holistic way of living and being. So what we are, inshallah, starting uh, next year, uh, we're, we're already doing the courses to become qualified in this. Uh, during our lunch break, students will all, inshallah, have a chance of doing archery. Okay? So we will be doing that. And um, not only that, we want to further this to not just our children, but also we're going to start a Fatima Elizabeth Archery Club uh, in Walthamstow, where parents can participate. You can join Archery GB and go all the way to the Olympics. Uh, if you wish, inshallah. And also, following that, we're straight away going to be starting a, a fencing club as well. So that's, you know, using the swords and things like that. And again, under the whole Olympic uh, thing as well. So every year, we want to start new projects every single year. 
If there's a year that we don't start a project, for us, that's a downfall. So we want to constantly be thinking. We never want to sit down and say, this is it. And if we are busy in this, inshallah, shaitan will not be able to get to us and you know, you know, finish off our plans. So that's, um, that was our madrasa. Now, just moving forward, because we're starting all these different things, there comes a point where we think, okay, where are we going to house all of this? Okay. Where are we going to do some of the archery and then we've got to think about, okay, where do we do it after school, where do we do this, where do we have our extra tajweed lessons, where do we do our science and Islam projects. So we wanted to make an announcement okay. and the announcement comes as a form of our intention. We have an intention, inshallah, and I wanted to talk about this very briefly before we finish up and uh, the time we, that I've been given to finish was 5 past 9. It's 10 past 9, so inshallah, just a few more minutes. Um, it's the Fatima Elizabeth Mosque, okay, the Fatima Elizabeth uh, Masjid. And we want this masjid to be like the Masjid of the Prophet wasallam in all its glory. In all its glory. Okay? We're talking about the spiritual side, the worship aspect. We're talking about the physical. We're talking about the intellectual. Everything that was happening in the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we've heard so much happened in the masjid, yet we feel that a lot of that is lacking in our masjids today. And what we want to do is, yes, start all these projects, but all these projects they were taking place as part of the masjid of our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Where was he telling the companions, you know, to, you know, to, to 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 run, to race, to swim? Where was he telling them to do this? Right? At the same time, uh, emphasizing the notion of archery. And just to, just to, because I'm looking very closely at an Ottoman text at the moment. There is a hadith of Prophet Sallallahu to the nearest meaning, where he, where he actually says that, you know, if you have a lot of stress, if there's a lot on your mind, a lot playing on your mind, he actually said, get your bow, get your arrows and shoot. Okay? Not at people, or in, but at, a, at, a, at a boss or at a target. Okay? Boss means target. So, and then some of the, uh, some of the um, uh, commentators, they say that Prophet Sallallahu also said that if you do not use archery for warfare and you do not use archery for, um, for hunting and you only use it to get rid of your stress, even then archery is the best of sports. Okay? And that's why we want to have this as part of our madrasa. Yeah. And I have personally experienced this, and everyone will go through their own experience, but I have felt this quite a bit. Because sometimes, you know, uh, when you go to uh, people, you say, look, I'm going through so much stress, and they say, okay, read this so-and-so times, which is good, or read certain verses of the Qur'an. But actually, Prophet ﷺ has also given a physical uh, you know, way of getting out of this, and one of them was archery. So we want to embrace Islam in all its glory, in all its beautiful ways. And uh, I'm not going to talk about bring back the golden age. No, we want to create a new age, a new time for our children. Because we strongly feel that if the West is to be successful spiritually and in every other way, then Islam does have the answers. But it's going to happen when we look at Prophet Sallallahu life in that holistic manner and in that holistic way. And the Prophet Sallallahu has given us everything. And the more we approach his life, we will see, it will open up. Right? He even gave us modes of you know, politics. Sometimes we think that's not part of Islam when early Muslims came here, they stayed away from there. But there are ways of engaging. There are ways of doing things. And that's what we want in our masjid, inshallah. Now, some of you will say, when, where, how? We want to have that's a masjid in an area. Uh, secondly, when we, talk, when we talk about how, I will very clearly say, when Allah wants it to happen. We have the intention. But when Allah wants it to happen, Allah will open up the ways. Uh, when we started our madrasa, Fatima Elizabeth Front History, five years ago, uh, we didn't imagine for our students to number 360, have 40 plus members of staff. We, I, we didn't have that. I didn't have that in my mind. But when your intentions are big and your intentions are that Allah is your guide, then you have nothing to worry about. Because 
You do your effort, you do your thing, and then Allah does the rest. And that's our philosophy under Fatima Elizabeth. And also the early Muslims who became Muslims here. I mean, I just want to bring Fatima Elizabeth into this because she sacrificed a lot. Okay? When she accepted Islam, she was only 19. In 1880s, in an area in Liverpool and surrounding Liverpool, when she accepted Islam, uh, she was pinned down on the floor and then there was horses manure, there were no cars at the time, so people just used horses. There were horses man horse manure that was wiped all over her in 1880s. Okay? She was stoned for being a Muslim. She was the only female Muslim at the time, in her area especially. Okay? And she continued this at the age of 19. And how did she become a Muslim? She, at a very early age, was against alcohol. Right? She was against alcohol and then she found out that it won, in one of the temperance uh, society movements uh, uh, she, was gonna, she, she attended one of those lectures and one day the lecture was given by Sheikh al-Islam was given this title Abdullah Quilliam and he was speaking about so he wanted to propagate Islam he wanted to give da'wah about Islam because he became Muslim at the time and what he felt he initially started just lecturing but he was pelted with stones and everything else so what he did then was, he was also part of the temperance movement, which was a movement to stop alcohol. So he used that as a platform to talk a bit about alcohol, but then explain how Islam deals with this problem. To explain how the Prophet de dealt with this problem, and how the companions dealt with this problem. So, they were, so she went to one of those lectures by him, and she was fascinated that these Muslims, or these Mohammedans, I did not know that they do not drink. Tell me more about them. And at that time, the person sitting next to her was also a Muslim. So they were the two Muslims, Sheikh Abdullah Quilliam and the person next to her. And then she said to him, look, tell me more about this. And then ultimately, Sheikh Abdullah Quilliam gave her his own copy of the Quran. She took this home and her mother said to her, what is this rubbish? What is this? Throw this out at once. And then she ran into her room. She locked herself in and she read the Quran from cover to cover and then she came out of her house as a Muslim. There was so much Islamophobia and physical and, and even mental you know, uh, uh, struggle against her that she could not leave the Quran, even the book, in her house. She had to carry it on the streets. Can you imagine? She was carrying the Quran in the streets of Liverpool wherever she went. These were the elders of this country, of this island that we now find ourselves in. And we want Islam to be holistic, to be approachable for everyone. Okay? And what Prophet ﷺ gave, he gave us a promise that his name and Islam will reach every house. It's now our duty to be welcoming towards Islam. It's our duty to keep those, those doors open for Muslims. And unfortunately nowadays, to keep those doors open for Islam, for even Muslims. Okay, so there are many of our youngsters who find it difficult to follow Islam in this era. Okay? And that's why you know, we want to try all, you know, even science and Islam. We're bringing all this to our madrasa for the children. And they will be always at the crux, at the kernel of all of this. So in coming back to the mosque, we want our masjid to be a masjid which where all of this, which, which we spoke about today, this is not even 1% of what was happening in Prophet Sallallahu Masjid. There was much more. There was much, much more. And we want to bring that back now and here. And that's why, for those of us who are interested, okay, uh, we do have some sheets of paper, which I cannot remember where I placed, but maybe we will find it. Um, we'll place them at the front, maybe with some pens, because I was just given some papers, but there were no pens. I was wondering uh, how that would work. But inshallah, we might do But there, but there are other chances where you can call me or even speak to me directly in our masjid. So, if you have an idea, there are already there are brothers from amongst you and sisters who have come to, uh, to, to myself and said, yes, I've got a little diary. And in that diary, we write down, uh, everyone writes down their name, their phone number and the contact details, and what they want to offer to this, to this masjid. And as, as I mentioned earlier, the promise uh, that they used to speak about during the time of Fatima Elizabeth, uh, that this is only for Allah because we are only in this, you know, on this planet right, for a very short period of time and that will come to an end very quickly. Before we know it, we will be on our deathbeds and we will be 
you know, you know, we will be transitioning to the next world. But before that, we've got to do as much as we can, what is in our power and control, to really present Islam wherever we are, right? whichever country we are, whichever place we are, in the best of ways and in the best of forms. And that promise comes through ikhlas. That we, are, we are doing this only for Allah, because only Allah can give us back the reward and only Allah can give us true eternal peace in the hereafter and that's if we do this with the right intention so those of us so I've had for example a brother who's an architect he came and he said look I can do all that side I'm willing to help with that uh, we've, have, we've had others who are going to take on different parts and I, as I mentioned that within the masjid we want to have a group of brothers who will form a, like a management but then also have sisters who will have their management because our masjid will be like the masjid of the Prophet and most importantly, most importantly in our masjid we will, get, we will have a group of children, teenagers who will manage their section of the masjid as well okay we had just two hands up there, could you stand up please? okay yes and we had this discussion uh, before as well yes you, went, you wanted straight away to be the, the, the lead wasn't it? Okay, so, so anyway, so the point is, whatever you want to offer, if you have any ideas, we are more than happy to listen. Because it's late, um, inshallah, if you can come and meet me in, um, the, in the office. We also had some, some of our students, even Ustad Dawood, who's at the back. He's still awake, mashallah, he's doing well. Uh, he mentioned that he, he's happy to lead one prayer a week, which is very good. And if we can get uh, more students, then we can also get them to um, also... Um, uh, you know, lead even few. So we, we wanted to do, try different things as well. Ustad we'll Sayyid, you can lead one prayer if you like as well. Would you be happy with that? Inshallah. Okay. Okay. Jazakallah. Subhanallah. Bihamdi. Subhanakallahumma. Bihamdi. Kashadu Allah. Ilaha illa. Ta'astaghfiruka wa tuubu ilayk. Jazakallah. Khairun fakam.